28-year-old business owner Chris Trott twice, an Obama voter flipped to Trump in 2016. He's not a guy that I would go and want to have a beer with or go golfing with. But you'll vote for but him But I'll again. vote for him. Um, Why? Because what he's doing seems to be working. Saddled with college loan debt, Trott took a huge gamble four years ago, starting his own vehicle modification business. It's growing. He might soon hire his first full-time employee. The strong economy gets his vote, as does the president. Maybe. I'm going to have to hold out and say it's probably going to be Trump, but I'm still open to seeing different things. A common refrain, Democrats here hold a sizable registration advantage over Republicans, but many voters cross over. Until 2016, no Republican had won Erie County since 1984, when Ronald Reagan did on his way to winning re-election. Trump campaigned in Erie and returned here after his election. He carried the county by fewer than 2,000 votes. Clinton won the city, Trump the suburbs and rural areas. Last year's midterm saw Democrats flip 35 suburban and rural precincts back to their candidates. One of those places, the borough of Girard in the Erie suburbs. Yeah. Business owner Carla Gooden, a Democrat who voted for Trump, has soured on his presidency. I don't even admit that I voted for him. Why? Because he's so, like, his personality is nasty. Like, I don't feel like he's a good role model. So you won't vote for him in 2020? No. Did I you? don't think I will. Down the street at the Girard Diner, owner Dick Crosby credits the president for the strong economy. He sees Trump as unbeatable in 2020. Said you can go to almost every business around here and you'll see a sign in the window for help wanted. Mm -hmm. They can't find people to work. So that tells you that something's going good. His sister, Mary Lurie, a diehard Democrat, voted for Clinton in 2016, but says she'd have a hard time pulling the lever for a candidate that's too progressive. I don't know what the country's ready for. I don't know if they're ready for a woman president or a gay president or any of that stuff either. The economy here, paramount. What do we want? All 1,700 members of Erie's largest union, United Electrical, went on strike earlier in the year. Trump won many rank-and-file union votes in 2016. Both parties vow to fight for those same voters in 2020. Going into 2020, we're looking very strong. I think uh, 2018 built a lot of momentum. Do you think you can count on union votes in 2020? Well, we've got to work for them, and uh, I, I can count on them thinking and uh, uh, believing in this region. The Rust Belt, a major route on the road to the White House. Miguel Marquez, CNN, Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, so we were just talking about the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, Sung Min, you just saw a voter who backed Obama twice, uh, voted for Trump, and he says he will vote for President Trump again, even though he wouldn't want to have a beer with him. <laughs> Is the economy strong enough that it will actually bolster his chances of even doing better in Pennsylvania, perhaps. And that's the major question that we'll see, because if you look at the president's current approval ratings, the Washington Post just released a poll about an hour or so ago of the president's latest approval ratings. His approval ratings are at 39, disapproval at 54. With how good the economy is doing, those are remarkably low numbers. So you wonder how much higher those numbers would be if this was kind of a conventional president who didn't have the specter of a special counsel investigation hanging over, who perhaps didn't have access to a Twitter account. Um, <laughs> but um, but uh, clearly the economy is going to be so paramount in these Rust Belt states. I've also been talking to people in Wisconsin ahead of the, his rally in Green Bay tomorrow. And while there are Republicans there who say, you know, we wish he would stop tweeting. Um, they do like the tax cuts and the deregulation policies of the administration. And they like the economy doing well. You just talked about a, a new Washington Post poll. I'll take a look at, at this poll from Monmouth University, which has President Trump at 40 percent approval, 54 percent disapproval. Uh, Jeff Zeleny, I mean, one of the things that's interesting about this is President Trump won with very low approval numbers. I mean, it, it was Hillary Clinton also had low approval numbers, but I mean, it wasn't as though he was super popular and he became elected president. Uh, there are a lot of people that held their nose and, and voted for him. And also, of course, he lost the popular vote by three million votes. Exactly. And that's not I mean, I think that is will be an increasing trend, most likely just by how people view politicians. The approval rating is not going to be that high. But I think at this point, any poll like that, you must take with a grain of salt. They don't know who um, is going to be running against them. So Joe Biden's challenge and task and other Democrats 
are convincing those OT voters, if you will, Obama and Trump voters, to go back to the Democratic Party. And that is at the heart of Joe Biden's message. Uh, but you also heard the other voters say, she's like, I'm not sure uh, what progressives are pushing, how much the country is ready for. So that is the balance there inside the Democratic Party. As you see it, vert, you know, sort of veering left, Joe Biden's trying to... You know, yeah, and, uh, and Tara, let me ask you, because center. your your vote is up for grabs, theoretically, a Republican who doesn't like Donald Trump's behavior. Right. You want the economy to stay strong. Does the Democrat have to basically say, I'm not going to try anything too crazy to get your vote? Because well, the I can, yeah, I can tell you, they start talking Green New Deal stuff. Um, they're not going to get my vote, and Donald Trump's not getting it either. But if they want people like me, the people who crossed over during the midterms and voted um, Democrat in the midterm elections, the, the, the moderate right of center folks, they cannot be um, these pie in the sky, very the socialist idea that, that Trump and, and the right are pushing. That's very effective. Um, and so if they do that, that's a no-go for people that are in a lane like mine. But I worry about Trump doing something to manipulate the economy for short-term gain just because he knows that's the only lifeline that he has. You know, it, it, the shutdown didn't affect anything. Who knows, will he do that again? What is he trying to stack the Fed because he wants to manipulate monetary policy? Well, the answer is yes. On right, that. of course. So I'm so those <laughs> kinds of things know. worry me about what he's going to yeah. do because people respond to pocketbook issues. But this is also a big debate for your party, Paul, because Absolutely. you have Democrats, progressives who want boldness and think that the idea is don't run a corporate Democrat like Joe Biden, their words, not mine, uh, run somebody who's going to get out uh, young people, uh, Democratic socialists, uh, far left progressives, uh, minority voters. Get the get their vote out and stop worrying about the no offense, but the terrors of the world. Well, <laughs> There's a lot of us. They, they they should worry about the terrors. The idea here is to win. Yeah, right. right. To, right. To, to get but, more. But can you do that by, by straddling a big progressive ambitious plan versus oh. I don't want to rock the boat on the economy. I like their economy. I, I, first, I just want them to focus on the economy. Yeah. Rather than say, should the Boston Marathon bomber be able to right. vote from prison? Are you kidding me? I, I, the Democrats, the president's approval not rating... A you're not a fan of that. Not a fan of that one. <laughs> the president's approval rating took a hit last week. And we all thought it's because of Mueller. And maybe it is. My buddy Carvel has a different theory. April 15th, tax refunds came out, and most middle-class people did not get what they thought they deserved. So he's, his idea, and I think it's the right one, Democrats ought to be holding hearings on the tax cut and how it's not helped the middle class, on the president's uh, uh, proposal to cut $2 trillion from Medicare, Medicare, Social Security. In other words, get back to the meat and potatoes economic issues, Democrats.